In their last 30 games, Portsmouth have only lost once, just coming off the back of a 27-game unbeaten run. They currently sit top of Sky Bet League 1 with a six-point cushion in the automatic promotion places. We're not here to jump the gun too early, but there's plenty to suggest this Pompey side have all the ingredients to achieve something rather special this time around. This time last year, John Messina was an active member of the Oxford United playing squad. This year, he's constructing, coaching and on course to guide this Pompey team to long-awaited success. After nearly one year in the job, John Messinio has adopted a quite pragmatic, calm approach to things, very similar to the new crop of young coaches currently making their mark in the Football League. Kieran McKenna, Michael Carrick, and I regret to say it, Liam Manning all tend to fit that similar profile. We'll go into detail on the principles of this Portsmouth side later, but in a short amount of time, Messinio has formed an identity that simply clicked. To summarise briefly, it all focuses on domination, high numbers in possession, get it out wide quickly and look to be progressive in every department and every opportunity. Pompey's effective recruitment strategy has led to a stylistic transformation. But before we touch on the individuals and their details, it's important we break down the rebuild itself. Of course, it wasn't Massinio just leading that summer reshuffle, but also it was Richard Hughes, the sporting director. The duo saw 17 new faces join Fratton Park with 24 departing, but instead of the amount, let's focus on the profile. Out of the 17 recruited, only four were 25 years or older, suggesting one of the clear recruitment criteria of the summer was rebuilding a squad with a much younger core. In fact, we're looking deeper into that age profile. Seven of those 17 were 22 or younger, decreasing the average age of the squad to 24.8. That's the eighth lowest out of all of the other clubs in Skybet League One. One of the biggest complaints amongst Portsmouth fans in recent windows is the failure to recruit talent on a permanent basis. For context, 41% of last season's summer transfers were made up of loan signings. This time around, that number only sits at 17%. To put it simply, the makeup of the squad this time around focuses on a younger, more long-term profile for success and sustainability for now and for years to come. But by no means have Portsmouth broken the bank. In fact, seven of those 17 recruited this summer were free transfers. Gavin White, Regan Paul, Will Norris, Jack Sparks, Ben Stevenson, Ryan Schofield and Connor Shocknessy were all signed on free transfers, aiming to build a core, provide options and create plenty of quality in depth. <laughs> In fact, three of those individuals have now created a new Portsmouth spine. Will Norris has been the number one goalkeeper, while Regan Paul and Connor Shocknessy with a preferred centre-back partnership before Paul's season-ending injury. The strong foundation is not just shore things up defensively, but allow Portsmouth to be far more progressive when playing from the back. The question marks over Will Norris' ability to play with the ball at his feet and distribute effectively were brushed aside quickly, boasting a place in the top 6% for accurate long balls. The best way to illustrate the shift in Norris's positioning as a goalkeeper is comparing his personal heat map from this season and the one from his time at Peterborough in the last campaign. The map on the left is from this season, clearly showing his frequent habits to venture further away from his penalty area. The second one is very different and shows a goalkeeper much more comfortable in staying within the lines of the penalty box. The sudden change is no coincidence and exactly Ambrosino wants his goalkeeper to play. With the intention to have plenty of the ball, Norris almost becomes a third defender in build-up, whilst also protecting his side from the chance of a counter-attack against that high line. For the forward, the ball-playing ability of Paul and Shocknessy are transformative upgrades on the likes of Ragger and Towler. Both good defenders, but when it comes to playing from the back, they're definitely not as effective. <laughs> Whilst they haven't been over-reliant on it, Pompey's use of the low market has been more successful than ever. Alex Robertson and Abu Kamara make up two of the three deals on a temporary basis, with both being prominent figures in that starting eleven. The pair have started 14 games each in Skybet League One and have shown the benefits of taking a risk on a young talent desperate to make an impact on a professional stage. I want to focus on Alex Robertson on loan from Manchester City. The Australian has added a brilliant but unique dynamic to this Pompey midfield. On the eye, he's been a sight to behold. The man demands possession at every opportunity, fitting the patient and dominant style that's been deployed in build-up. He's touched the ball 955 times this season. That's more touches than 97% of players currently competing in Skybet League One. His close touch control and ability to play on the half turn forces opposing players to defend tightly, create space for others and win fouls in all areas of the pitch. Robertson currently ranks in the top 9% for fouls won compared to all other midfielders in the division, only being dispossessed 15 times in 17 appearances. 
In a system where recycling and keeping hold of possession is crucial, Alex Robertson fits the bill perfectly. He sits in the top 8% for accurate forward passes with an 83.9% pass accuracy across both halves. Alongside the experience of Marlon Pat, the tenacious elements of Joe Morrell's game and the developing Terry Devlin, the options in midfield are another crucial cog in the identity and winning formula being built over time. When Massinho first came into the club, it was the forward play that were causing those early grumbles. This time around, that perception has totally moved on. With the use of the 4-2-3-1, Pompey's use of the flanks are the primary source of their attack. However, it's not a case of chance and lumping balls into the box. Intricate and pragmatic moves lead to dangerous openings from wide areas. In fact, Massinho's side currently ranked first for accurate crosses per 90, with an average of 6.4 completed in each game. With Michael Jacobs, Rico Hackett, Ronan Curtis and Owen Dan all leaving the club, the summer was a chance to refresh things in the wide areas. Gavin White, Abu Kamara, Tony Andrin, Anthony Scully, Jack Sparks and the existing Paddy Lane all provide options for John Massinho. In fact, the group have already contributed to 19 goals this season. The attack is extremely fluid. The wide players often drift from coming inside to stretching the play, but Colby Bishop, Portsmouth number 9, has his eyes on only one thing. With 11 goals in Scarlet League 1 so far this season, he's in the top 4% for goals and has the highest expected goals out of any other striker in the division. But Colby Bishop is the full package. And here's why. As his season heat map shows, his link-up and hold-up play is on a different level. The striker has won the highest number of duels and won back possession in the final third the most out of all number 9s in the league. When he's not scoring, his creative output is just as impressive. Bishop sits in the top 3% for chances created and expected assists when you compare him to all the other strikers in League One this season so far. He might drop deep to play his part in the build-up, but when it comes to finishing, there's only one place you'll find him. The term penalty box striker and fox in the box can often be overused, but Colby takes those cliches extremely seriously. Take a look at his season heat map. Only four of his 58 efforts on goal have come from outside the box. Out of every striker in the league, Bishop has touched the ball the most inside the opposing penalty area. You may be thinking, is it quite rare to have this quite penalty box heavy shot map? And how does it compare to the other centre forwards in the league? Well, let's take a look. I've put this together for you now. As you can see, compared to the other top goal scorers in the division, that's Alfie May of Charlton, Sam Hoskins of Northampton and Jamie Reid of Stevenage, Bishop's shot map stands out. You may be thinking, is he having less shots in certain areas and being more specific in those moments? The answer, absolutely not. Colby Bishop has taken 58 shots so far this season. That's the most out of any other striker in Sky Bet League One. <laughs> Integrating so many new faces can't be easy, and with the expectation associated with Portsmouth, the ability to hit the ground running straight away has been some achievement. With a large number of those signings completed early, Massinio's first summer camp as a head coach would be crucial. Luckily, I know somebody that went on that trip. John did pick up, so here's somebody else you may recognise. Guardiola's asked me to send in a little clip to you regarding the importance of the Spain trip for Pompey earlier on in the pre-season. What a lucky bunch you are. 4-0 on the channel twice in one week. Doesn't get better than that. The three words he sent to me were integration, culture and personalities. And I think there's an extent to which each of those is as equally as important as each other. Integration, of course, spending a week away with a group of players that you've never met or played with before, maybe played against on a couple of occasions. Those senior pros being the glue sort of around the swimming pool when they're all chatting or in the training sessions to kind of mould the players you never met before together. It didn't feel like it was kind of people in their own little groups chatting to each other and getting to know each other. It really was one cohesive group unit where there was a lot of camaraderie developing and it's part of the reason why I think the start of the season has gone so well is because that group had the week in Spain where they were all together all of the time, six or seven days a week and the sheer number of new players that were coming into the squad had to get in there and get in there quick and had to get to know each other quickly because we knew how crucial that this season was going to be and I think that was the plan from day one so get in amongst it get them together get them living on top of each other for as best they can and I think that's what we saw and I think we saw a group that yes got as many training sessions in as possible and I know it was hard work out there because we saw it firsthand but there was plenty of social relaxation time as well so I think a really good opportunity for them to get to know each other of course, there's lots of senior... I've mentioned senior pros, their personalities. You look at the likes of Joe Morrell, Joe Rafferty, and Marlon Pack, and, of course, Colby Bishop are the four key members of that leadership group that Joe spoke to about a little while ago. 
they were obviously really keen on on getting those new players into the squad and I feel like a week away in the sun in Spain you really get to know each other inside out and you can let the football do the talking when that first league game came around which is exactly what we did we didn't need that extra little bit of time that maybe squads who are less fortunate to have such a well-planned and well-prepped pre-season training camp did at this level we're very fortunate to have the brilliant program that they devised for us very fortunate as well to have the bodies and the names in the door when we did so that they're all ready to go pretty much all of them ready to go as that pre-season training camp in spain came around the corner <laughs> We can chat about philosophy, style of play, principles, individual quality all day, but it's the belief and character of this Pompey squad that's been simply immense so far this season. From late winners to scintillating comebacks, there's a special mentality built into this well-constructed squad. In fact, John Messina's side have picked up 17 points from losing positions. That's over 40% of their overall points tally. I've said this countless amount of times on the roundups, and I use this football cliche again when describing this Pompey outfit, but they always find a way to win. This Pompey side always find a way of getting over the line in the end. A trait along with many others that really could guide this football club back to where it belongs. If you did enjoy this different style of video, please make sure you subscribe and leave a like. Over 150 likes would be incredible. It helps me grow and reach new audiences, and that's exactly what we intend to do. But most importantly, Pompey fans, let me know in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with large aspects of this video? I can't wait to hear your feedback. Until next time, I've been Jack. This has been the Jack Ward Football Podcast, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care.